Uh, the ETFs, it's interesting. I've been in finance for over 40 years, and to see the coordination and the multiple launch of a product simultaneously like this is highly unusual. I've never seen it quite before. So I think there is an agenda going on up, up from 15 different financial institutions right. uh, or all have an ETF in the works. Usually it's, you know, first mover advantage and somebody comes up with an ETF and they kind of get the market and they are like the GLD, for example, mm. was launched. And I believe it's either HSBC or JP Morgan or the custodian behind that. And they launched it and they captured the blind share of the market and they have that product. And that's typically the way products are launched. But here they're saying to Wall Street, we want you to coordinate a product launch simultaneously amongst all of you financial institutions. Welcome to Unscripted Crypto. In this video, we delve deeper into the revolutionary world of Bitcoin ETFs, a topic brought into the spotlight by Max Kaiser. With the recent approval of Bitcoin ETFs in the U.S., we are witnessing a historic moment in the financial world. This marks a significant shift in the industry, bridging the gap between traditional investment mechanisms and the burgeoning world of cryptocurrencies. Bitcoin ETFs, such as the one launched by BlackRock, offer investors a regulated and more familiar way to gain exposure to Bitcoin's price movements without the complexities of direct cryptocurrency investment. Vanek's spot Bitcoin ETF, notably the largest in terms of seed capital, represents a milestone in the acceptance of digital currencies. This is not just about creating new investment products. It's a pivotal moment in financial history, signaling the mainstream adoption of cryptocurrencies. Looks like a highly politicized uh, kind of coordination going on there. Simultaneously, Liz Warren is saying what she's saying and attacking Bitcoin and so-called crypto. So to your point, that is this set up a situation where the public is only allowed to own ETFs, which are derivative of Bitcoin and cash settled, similar to gold. You know, if, if gold gets into GLD gets into trouble, they have the ability to settle in cash. They don't have to send you gold. They can send you fiat money to your exact phrase. It defeats the purpose. So an ETF Bitcoin that's settled in cash is almost point. But nevertheless, um, it will bring in a lot of capital. Simultaneously, they could say, well, self-custody of Bitcoin, according to Liz Warren, could be banned. So now you have a situation where only the government can own actual Bitcoin, and, but the public can only own a derivative. Remember, Bitcoin separates money from state. And that's, that's as accurate, that's true as saying that gold is element number 79 on the periodic table. That's, it's a statement of fact. Yeah. And now the state is trying to trying to snatch it back. But the vector that Bitcoin is on, it has achieved escape velocity. Mm. And that no state will be able to try to bring it back on, in the fold. It's gone. It, they, 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 they messed up. It's gone. Yeah. yeah. Austin, Austin Goolsby was right about that. He said we should have killed it while we had the chance. You know, he being under uh, President Obama. But, uh, and, and Satoshi himself, like, messaged said as such during um like when wikileaks first got involved in bitcoin in 2010 he was worried he expressed concern saying that we're you know like we're too young and we're too small to uh, we, battle we kick the, the hornet's order. nest he said yes yes the kick the hornet's nest that's that's what he said yeah. and uh so he he was right but luckily well the u.s was had multiple war fronts at that time and and it was too small and they didn't think it was going to be a threat so um, they just thought it was Max and Stacy on Kaiser <laughs> report, so uh, they were wrong. The thing about money is that it is a coded way to promote freedom. And so Bitcoin is perfect money, and therefore it, it satisfies something in us as human beings. So as long as humans still want to be human, Bitcoin will be on that vector going away from the state. And the state was always ends up coalescing and becoming powerful to the extent of snuffing out freedoms. Yeah. And this, therefore, this, this battle against money versus the state has been lost by the state. They, they have lost. They are dead. The only thing left now is to bury them. They're the walking dead. Austrian economics is, is great in theory, but you know, we will never see it in practice because we'll always be subject to fiat money and the central bankers only if by some workaround by some right. sly mechanism would we have a money that was separate from the state could we ever really see if this stuff would work and at the time people said yeah of course that'll never happen 
But in 2009, it did happen. Money was created that separates money from state. It's totally decentralized money. And that's the key. You know, there's before Bitcoin and after Bitcoin. And El Salvador made Bitcoin legal tender. And um, it matches perfectly with the leader, uh, President Bukele, is somebody who um, has leaned into that and seen that um, decentralization and giving power back to the people um, and letting the people decide. He's always making a reference to this. I'm here for the people. I serve the people. Let the people decide. And uh, has worked wonderfully here. So I think that for the first step for other countries is to understand the role Bitcoin plays in all of this. Obviously, in the communist countries, we know that there's it never works. So we know the end game there. It's failure. It always is 100% failure. In the case of countries that are going to rely on a fiat money standard, we know that now definitively, after 300 years of experimentation, the central bank fiat money system is it failed. It didn't work. Max Kaiser's insights on the political implications of Bitcoin ETFs open a window into the complex interplay between finance and regulation. The approval of these ETFs comes amidst a broader conversation about the role of digital currencies in the economy and the regulatory frameworks needed to govern them. We're now seeing regulators like the SEC taking a more active role, balancing the need for innovation with investor protection. The BlackRock ETF, for instance, navigated a rigorous regulatory path to approval, setting a precedent for future cryptocurrency-related financial products. This development could potentially lead to a more structured and stable cryptocurrency market, offering investors both transparency and security. However, it also raises questions about the future of decentralized currencies and the balance of power between state and digital financial systems. All the countries starting in 1971 went on a pure fiat money standard. Uh, Europe... Uh, of course, as the European Central Bank and the Bank of England and the Federal Reserve Bank and Bank of Japan. And, but they all kind of feed back to mother, the mothership that is the Federal Reserve Bank. Certainly after World War II, the U.S. took this global role as being the world's kind of banker. And um, as a result, uh, everybody kind of answers to what's happening in the U.S. Up until maybe things have gotten much different with the advent of Bitcoin and the geopolitics has changed somewhat. But yeah, you're right. Everyone is kind of in the same boat. So the, so the stuff that we're reporting on would relate to everybody has that understanding and they want to know why they live in this fiat money system, why it's so crummy. And um, so it does relate to everybody because, they all, because we're all living in a similar situation. The uh, purchasing power of fiat money all over the world continues to decline. So, and people are starting to under, feel the inflation, even in, at the mothership country in the U.S., inflation is really starting to rage. Yeah. And we see the wealth and income gap spread all over the world, and we see poverty rates increasing. That's a result of the fiat money system. So the, the tricks are not really working, and the, we see it on the ground. There's a lot more social unrest, and I think yeah. that's what we would attribute toward to the fiat money system and the central banking system more than any political aspect. This is really the result of, of all this money printing. I would also add that I am not very surprised because, look, you have perfect money that is Bitcoin, and yet there are also like a million shit coins. Let's call them that. Yeah. And the reason why those exist is because of that fiat mentality. That is the majority of the population will always be like that. They will take the airdrops. They will take the student debt forgiveness. They will take the, the Biden bucks. They will take those free checks. They will take the PPP loans. They will do all that stuff and that's what they like and that keeps them in that system and that keeps that system afloat. And so I'm not surprised that it exists because look, uh, I just saw a headline that Joe Biden was considering a help to buy sort of scheme. Now, this is a scheme that will help 500,000 Americans buy their home. Well, Max and I were living in London back after the first financial crisis when, of course, if Satoshi in the Genesis block put uh, Chancellor on brink of second bailout for banks. Well, around that same time, they introduced a, um, a help to buy scheme soon, soon after that. And it's, it was called Help to Buy, and the taxpayer would fund for a lucky few uh, individuals 20% uh, of their deposit for their properties because the property prices were too high because yeah. of all the money printing from QE to bail out the banks. So that's the system that 
most people like. If they could get a free home off the taxpayer, they'll take the free home. Many people in crypto, very few people in Bitcoin, took those PPP loans, right? There was a whole, anybody who took more than $100,000, I believe, were um, made public in the US. So remember, these were um, free loans. They were loans that you didn't actually have to pay back. Well, look at the number of billionaire crypto folk that uh, took those loans. Yeah. Uh, you know, this is what they do. That's their mindset. So I, it doesn't surprise me. Now we reflect on the broader implications of Max Kaiser's discussion, especially in the context of the ongoing transition from fiat money to digital currencies like Bitcoin. The approval of Bitcoin ETFs isn't just a financial innovation. It's a signpost for a potentially seismic shift in global economics. The decline of fiat money's purchasing power, coupled with the rising influence of cryptocurrencies, is reshaping how we think about money and investment. Vanek's initiative in the Bitcoin ETF space is more than an investment product. It's a testament to the evolving nature of financial markets, where digital assets are becoming increasingly integral. As we observe the growth of these ETFs, we also see the potential for cryptocurrencies to challenge traditional financial systems, offering alternatives that could redefine monetary sovereignty and individual financial freedom. For more insights and updates on the dynamic world of cryptocurrencies, don't forget to subscribe and like this video.